Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you are listening to Resilient by Design. Today, I have a treat for you. I have Robin Cascanet of Robin Cascanet Interiors here in Toronto, and she is one of my MOGs. What? I know. What the heck is an MOG, Rebecca? <laughs> well, here's the thing. When I launched Momentum Marketing for the first time last summer, it was called the Momentum Challenge. And still a good name. I wonder if I should have kept it. I'm not sure. But anyhow, she signed up for the course. And um, anyone who did Momentum for the first time, I liked to think of them as the Momentum Originals because I knew I was always going to do more Momentum launches. And so I thought OG just meant like I'm an original, like I'm an OG. Did not know that OG actually meant original gangster. Um, but you know what? I thought it sounded cute. So I stuck with it. So they're my MOGs. So Robin is one of my MOGs. She started with me doing momentum. She since went on to do a take power of process. She's also a member of my designer room, uh, monthly membership, uh, which is open to any alumni of my courses. And anyway, she's just awesome. She's had an incredible journey growth since she started in momentum, uh, the best of which she has built so much confidence and is making so much more money. I can't wait for her to tell you in her own words. If you guys are curious about the course, go check it out, RebeccaHay.com forward slash momentum and enjoy this episode with Robin. All right. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Hay and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Are you looking to expand your network, gain momentum in your business, and be around your tribe of designers or decorators or architects? If you answered yes, then go check out the Collective Workspace. They offer a range of private office suites, flex workspaces, boardroom rentals, and many more books, along with a trade-only design resource library. Oh, and did I mention a boutique gym? Their flagship space is located in the heart of Toronto. I am here right now in the design district with a second location opening up this fall in Mississauga. Go check them out at thecollectiveto.com or go on Instagram at the Collective Workspace, your tour, or take advantage of their free three day pass. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, well, Robin, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. I have to say, it's really nice to see a familiar face this morning. I had a bit of a rough morning. My kids started school and they've not been sleeping through the night. And I'm just like so tired. And I started my day. I'm like, oh, at least I get to talk to people that I know. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. It's so nice. Uh, it is. I can relate. I remember back in the day when my son started school for the first time. It was hard on everybody, <laughs> especially me. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just like emotional too, right? It's just so it much. Is. And you're trying to remember and think of all the things in addition to a job, in addition to all the other things in life. Mm -hmm. Being a parent is hard, man. <laughs> it sure is. And when you're doing a full-time job and running your own business, it's got to be even harder. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand yeah. now, only now, why some parents decide to like take time to just be parenting, right? And take break from their job because it is really, it's a juggle. Anyhow, mm -hmm. we're actually not here to talk about that today. No. It's just on my mind. <laughs> uh, you're, I want you to introduce yourself to all of our, um, to our audience. Let them know a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, and how you know me. Okay. My name is Robin Cascanet and my business is Robin Cascanet Interiors. Uh, not, that's no surprise, I'm sure. Um, I am a residential interior decorator um, in Markham. I'm based in Markham, Ontario. And I, um, in my former life, I was a, a kindergarten and special ed teacher. And after I had my son, I was fortunate enough to be able to stay home with him 
So that was really great. You were one of those moms. I was lucky. I was very lucky. And, um, and so, but one thing I realized very quickly was I needed more than that. So in the meantime, I decided I got, I've always been interested in decorating. So I decided to go back to school and I went to Seneca and I got my interior decorating certificate there. So I graduated from that. That that was over, oh my gosh, like six years, part-time at night kind of thing um, in 2014. And I didn't really hit the ground running with my business till the last couple of years. I was sort of more or less dipping my toe in before that a little bit. Um, So yeah, so, um, and I know you because, well, first of all, I I very first got to know you because I, on social media. And so I followed you, I follow you on IG, of course. And then I guess, yeah, you were talking about this course that was coming up. Oh no, actually, that's not true. I met you actually before that with the designer meetup. Yes. That's right. Because I went with Michelle Bennett. Yeah, when we were allowed to do that in person, or we could do it in person. So that was the first uh, little time I actually met you pers- in person. I don't know if I've met you in person since then. It's all been virtual, actually. Oh my God, probably I think. not. I feel like we have because I've seen your face. Yeah, in places course, and we're yeah. on Zoom all the time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, so yeah. So then I decided you, you had. Uh, we're talking about it was like I think a free about momentum. Like it was a free, a free kind free of you know. Inter- yeah, yeah. masterclass. So I did that. And then I said, Hey, this sounds great. This is something I'm like ready for this. This is something that I'm ready to take on. And I signed up for it right away. And then realized from that process that, especially regarding the process, <laughs> our business process, that when you offered the next uh, power of process, I then took that as well. I'm also part of your um, designers room group. Yeah. So you're like well. shining star. You're a shining star. You're getting, you're, <laughs> you're taking all the nuggets, all the wisdom and you're implementing. It's amazing. You, I wanted to add, cause I thought of this mm-hmm. right before we hit record in mm-hmm. momentum. Cause I, I, so we're relaunching, like I'm reworking momentum. We're recording it and we're going to launch it at the end of September. Uh, it's going to be open for enrollment to new students and old students can join of course. But mm-hmm. um, it. I was rewatching it the very first, I wanted to call it an episode because it felt like I was watching TV. Yeah. The first Zoom, because it was live last time, right? So it was like, I would show yeah. up once a week, once a week or once every two weeks. I don't remember. Once a I week. I don't remember either. I think, I think it was, it was once a week. week. And we would have like a live coaching call where I would like teach in real time all the things. And your face was the first face that came up because I think you were the first person to do something. Oh, Raise your hand. That's, that's not really surprising. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're like, what? Me? Yes, My I was husband. watching. I was like, yes, Robin. Yeah. Like, you were yeah. gung ho from the start. You, I don't know what the question was. I asked about. Oh, I, I asked about some some homework exercise that I, I send out this homework before before we do the very first week of the course. I want everyone to do this homework, and you were mm-hmm. like, I'll share. And your face was the first one. I was like, Robin. I love it. What a keener. What a keener. Such a keener. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So good. Um, okay. So, I mean, that's amazing. I want to just, one question I have for you before we kind of dive into more about your sort of business growth and transformation is that transition from being at home, because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that have been at home with their kids or had a career, whether in design or in something else, and kind of hit the pause button. And, and they might be thinking, yeah, like, I really want to get into this career or... Like, what was it like for you? How was that transition from being sort of a stay-at-home mom, right, and, and focusing there to then deciding you're going to follow a different career path and go into business for yourself? What was mm. that transition like? Well, it's funny because I almost feel like I didn't fully appreciate what the business – well, I know I didn't appreciate that what the business end of this was because, quite frankly, in the courses that I took, it was sorely lacking in any – aspect right so there was that but you know what I think it was just I didn't go into it with oh I'm gonna start this huge business I'm gonna da, da, da. you know I think I just gradually eased myself into it for a couple of reasons I had still had my son at home and that sort of thing but also you know I you know getting clients like I started out with a friend and then another friend referred me and then it was just kind of you know and I yeah I think that's kind of the way it worked and then suddenly I just sort of said, you know what, I need to, I think if I'm really going to do this, and my son got older too, right? Like he just started college this year, like oh, he's away. That's in, crazy, uh, girl. Yeah. 
but um but you know i think i just, just something just clicked and i started listening to a lot of podcasts and then i just started becoming that much more aware of where you know i needed to change my business i was really going to do this i really needed to do this mm. um and there is you know i'll be honest there's some fear and trepidation because like I said, I, I don't have a business mind, <laughs> right? Like I just, it's not, it was so foreign to me because I've been in education, you know, I hadn't ever, and that's a very different mindset. Being an entrepreneur is a very different mindset than doing something like I was doing. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, I just, it, it was sort of a very gradual thing with not like a ton of, I'll be honest, planning. <laughs> just I sort of, you know, especially in the beginning, just kind of, Totally. Went along. Yeah. And you know, that's the story for so many people, whether they've changed careers or not. Um, it's, is that it kind of usually, I think, in, I think in the creative industries, and I don't think it's exclusive to interior design and decorating, but I think you're a creative, you just start creating and people are like, oh, hey, I want to pay you to do the thing. You're like, okay, pay me to do the thing. And somebody else wants, and it sort of starts that way for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think very few designers go into the design business thinking I'm going to run a business. At least I didn't right. give it that way necessarily. It was kind of like, I want to create and make mm-hmm. things beautiful. Obviously I want to make money at it. Um, yep. Would you say though, like, I think it's interesting to hear you say that. Cause I think you're doing like, you're all aces. Like I think you're really doing all the things to grow and establish your business and, and feel, I mean, I see, I see it on a regular basis because you're in the designer's room, obviously, and the progress is, is really wonderful. But do you, would you say that you can learn the business side or do you think it's something that is harder if you never, I guess what I'm getting at is, is business, in your opinion, is understanding the business of running a design business or anything, business of design, is that thing that can be learned or do you think it's something that you have to already have inside of you? I think it can be both, but I will say that if it's something that you have in you, it's like a huge bonus because the learning part, at least I can speak for myself and just a few other people I know, the learning part of it is really, uh, can be very challenging. Obviously it depends on your personality and the way your brain works and all that sort of thing, you know, but um, you just have to really do, you just have to really work at it. And it's sometimes hard to balance. Like the, I'm sure this is true for everybody, but it can be really like, I'm a solopreneur. I don't, there's no, I work by myself. So I'm responsible for all the things, you know? Um, and yeah, I think it's, I think for someone like me, I have to, what I need to do more of is rely on somebody else to do the stuff that I find so challenging. So for me, <laughs> that is the finance part of it right it's a part I hate and I don't I just hate doing it I I it gives me serious anxiety you <laughs> but and I do both, it girl. <laughs> I know but I'm doing it like I'm forcing myself to do it but honestly it doesn't come easy to me mm-hmm. so I have a bookkeeper now and I'm starting to work more with her like to, to really she's also a friend so you know to help me set up systems but yeah. um yeah yeah I think I've always, cause I've, I, I do struggle with this. I'm like, is it something that you just naturally have? Like I look at successful people and I think, do they naturally have this? Um, they just get it with business, like need to do mm-hmm. that or something that they've learned in school. And I think for those of us who are trying to figure out on, on our own and self-educate, we'll never really know the answer, but mm-hmm. I think you just hit the nail on the head when you said you're recognizing that you need help in the areas that you don't want to do or the areas that you don't find your strength. And so I Mm -hmm. think that that is a business mindset, whether that, whether you've learned that through courses and podcasts or it Mm -hmm. comes naturally, that is a business mindset. Um, Because I think that that's when I look to like big companies and I'm, I'm really like in this right now, because I'm all about team building right now is like, is, is, is my sort of struggle in a way because you get to a certain point you want to Mm -hmm. grow and it becomes more about managing people and less about the business. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it is, I think it's necessary for growth as a business to have people to support you, whether it's part-time, whether it's a bookkeeper or it's someone who comes in once a month to go review financials. I think that's really smart. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you want to enjoy your job as a creative person, as a, 
decorator or designer, if you want to enjoy it and, and cause it, <laughs> this won't be any surprise to anybody probably listening to this, but really this field is not as much about the design creative part as we'd like it to be right. There's so, so many other things, but, but if you really want to, in, you know, embrace the being creative and doing your best work and that sort of thing, having the support to take on the, those other things, is probably crucial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And actually it's, it's so, it's so interesting because I used to always think that like creatives, they just want to create and they need help with all the other things. But one of the, and I won't mention her by name because this was a private mm-hmm. conversation, but one of the girls who did, uh, or late women, excuse me, mm-hmm. who did um, momentum and power of process with us, sent us a note and said, wow, like momentum was amazing, but power of process <laughs> really helped me solidify and understand and realize that what I love to do is the sales. And that I just want to focus on the sale, the sales and the onboarding and the discovery call and the that part. And I don't want to do so much the design anymore. And I was like, huh, that's, so, I mean, amazing, right? Like, it's all about mm-hmm. self-discovery. A lot of these courses is like, and listening to podcasts and educating yourself is just discovering what it is in you that you want to do. But it was the first time I've heard that. And so I imagine there's probably a lot of other designers out there who maybe don't just want to focus on the creative, maybe they find passions in other areas Mm -hmm. and then recognizing that and then bringing on the help. Like for me, it's, it's changed what I'm passionate about. And I think that's normal as humans. We grow and we change. And you know, at one point you were teaching, right. And your passion was that. Then you were home with your son. Now it's changed. And for me, it was, I want to be a creative. I want to create. And now I want to, you know, now I actually really am into business and I want to set up systems and processes. And now I'm loving like creating online courses and curriculum and coaching and community. Like it's constantly evolving. So the help that I need is in some ways always changing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's okay. And I think that's just part of personal and professional growth. Um, uh, You're right. A lot of designers, you know, try to do everything. It's like the Jill of all trades. Mm -hmm. And then you don't get to spend the time doing the you love, which is either creating, sourcing fabrics, or maybe it's discovery calls and sales. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, I want to talk about, it's been a year Mm -hmm. more or less since Momentum, since, or a little bit more than a year since you came into my life. I would love for you to share with everyone, you know, what, and obviously we've been a bit of a unique year. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Which is, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but I would love to hear what, what you see as your sort of business growth over the last year since taking momentum. Mm-hmm. Like how have you seen change? Right. Um, I think what's interesting is that <clears throat> when I was thinking uh, about momentum and, and, and power process and just the courses over the last year and a bit, year and a half, whatever it's been, um, how, what, what has always been lacking, like I've always had a fair, I don't even know how I figured this out exactly because from the beginning, I've always had a little, like if I had a process, I've always had like phase one, phase two, more or less, which is like discovery. I mean, obviously it's been finessed and, 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 and finessed even more since I took your courses with, you know, I've made additions and, and the actual design process, like up to that point in the presentation, I've always had a fairly solid process there it was after that that everything completely (laughs) fell apart the implementation the it's like all of that was not and I wasn't and I obviously I was here's the thing truth here for everyone I wasn't getting paid for all of that I really just didn't even include that and so and that process itself the the um in the uh procurement and and you know all that implementation installation that was just sort of maybe a little haphazard, not haphazard, but not as uh, structured and wasn't really thinking so much about the client experience in that regard. Um, so look, when I, when we did momentum, because we covered all things, right. That was one of the things that stood out for me. Um, and that's something that I've absolutely changed. Um, so that's like sort of an overall view, but what I really liked about your course and both of your courses I've taken is that they're very structured. There's a step-by-step process. 
which I mean, I guess a lot are, but it was just, it's very concrete. And I personally am one of those people, which is what I figured out. Well, I, I identified more clearly during a personality test that we did, which I thought was very cool, by the way, because um, I'd never done anything like that before. But I am really a concrete person. Like I'm not one of those abstract thinking people. So having concrete steps, very clear, and you shared so many um, like of your uh, pieces of your own, uh, uh, your own materials that you use in your business. For me, that was so helpful because it really just helped me clarify what I needed to do. I didn't do exactly what, because my, my business is different than yours, but I was able to use that as a jumping off point. And that really helps me to develop and further improve my processes. So the biggest thing that's changed um, is that I uh, I just realized that I, I, I needed to do this or not and take the leap. <laughs> and so it's from that, it's given me more confidence. Wow, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting because... When I started out doing these courses, I was like, I really just, <clears throat> I really just want to give people more confidence. And somebody, my business coach at the time, was like, "You can't sell confidence, Rebecca. It needs to be more concrete." <laughs> I'm like, "No, no, no! Like that's what I feel like I always needed and lacked, and I'm still working on is the mm-hmm. confidence to ask right. for more money, to say this is who I am, to step out and into, I don't know, the limelight, right. if you will. And that's so, yeah." Wonderful. I feel like I'm being well, hugged by a warm blanket that you said that. Yeah. But the thing is, like, to me, the confidence comes from your, you know, having a clear vision, a clear uh, process that is worth something to your clients. You're going to get the confidence to ask for more money because you know that the experience is going to be much better for them. Well, that's what you're working towards. That's why I wasn't asking for more money before because I didn't feel confident in my ability to execute. Do you know what I mean? So, listen, th- this to me, I've been doing this for a while now and kind of like I told you, you know, podcasts and other different courses. I've, you know, done different things. I feel like it's uh, some people it's faster, but for me, it's been an, a, a process over time. And um, I just feel like this came at the right time for me. And, uh, it just, like I said, my confidence has improved because I'm confident in what I'm offering. Mm. You know, like that's the big takeaway, I think. And I mean, I'm going to assume and I'll you disprove or prove me mm-hmm. that right or wrong, that part of that confidence comes from being in a community of mm-hmm. minded individuals, whether it's going through a course like Momentum or part of our designer's room where you can hear what others are doing and the others will yep. give you feedback. And I know I've seen it with you and the and the crew and with all of us saying like, Robin, that's not enough. You need to charge more, right? Or mm-hmm. so-and-so, why would you, don't say this to the client, you say this, you're, you know, you're worth that. And, and it's really confidence building, I think, to hear your peers mm-hmm. who are supporting you, but also to see what they're doing. For sure. And also not just them, which obviously them supporting you and having that is wonderful. Like this community is really great that way because re- everybody is so generous, you know, with their, their thoughts and their time and their, their um, advice and that sort of thing. But also to be able to see that you're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know what the heck you're doing about something yes. or screwed something up or, <laughs> Oh my God, I can't believe this has happened. Like that, because let's, I'm alone here. Like there's no one else with me. And now obviously I do have some design friends and, but, but I don't have like colleagues working with me in the office where I can, you know, so mm. just to hear that other people are experiencing challenges and have overcome them is helpful. Yeah. Like you, you just, yeah. Me too, right? It's the whole mm-hmm. idea of me too. And not in the movement, like the not in the, no. the way that we think of me too anymore, but it's yeah. still this idea of like, yes, that's me. And seeing sometimes, honestly, seeing others struggle, as awful it is, is is helpful because you're like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Yeah. Right? right. Well, even just like, and this has been said so many times, but watching social media, quite often things look very perfect. People don't talk about the things that have screwed up. You know, like we yeah. just don't, right? Because it's hard. we don't want to put ourselves out there like that. But um, that's what's been so great. And, and and honestly, you know, that's, I mean, obviously there's a place for sharing on social media, but, you know, 
we don't want clients to hear about all the bad things. I mean, I suppose we could we could use it as a, a con- piece of content just to show how we solved the problem. Right. Um, but we're not going to talk about how we screwed up <laughs> on something. You know what I mean? We screwed up again. That's, I didn't yeah. to oh measure God, the electrical. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. We don't <laughs> want to give like, you know. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you <weren't> professional. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's so true. It's it's that highlight reel. I know it everyone you're right. Everyone talks about it all the time. Does it go away though? The fact that we're all talking about it is a step towards, you know, yeah. something. Um uh oh my friends yeah. sound, sorry. But it is certainly it's so true that when you're actually one on one with people or in a small group setting or with twenty other people, whatever it might be, that's when you realize, oh, Instagram is a highlight reel. Oh, I see mm-hmm. you. Like you, Sarah, I'm making a name. This isn't an individual, but like yeah. you, Sarah, because my daughter's name is Sarah. You, Sarah, like I see you on Instagram and you're freaking killing it. But like you're coming into this group and you're saying that you're you're insecure and you didn't charge enough money and now your client wants to sue you. Like, yeah. wow, it's so um, dramatically different the picture you see online. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying that you should put that online, but what I'm saying is that exactly what you're what you're referring mm-hmm. to is it's refreshing to have a community where someone can share their real experiences because mm-hmm. I think so many of us creative because we're so visual, we're very much on social media, we're on Instagram, looking at everyone else's life and assuming that they are so much further ahead or they've their shit together. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally, totally. Like, yeah. 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 And, and again, that's to be expected. I don't know. I mean, I like, I know that you've made an effort to, to be more, what's the word? Re- not real. You're always real, but like transparent or, you know, sharing the down things. And I think people appreciate that. Well, they really feel like they know you. I mean, I think that's huge. Sure. I could definitely be better at that, but I don't know. That's a whole other. <laughs> you just have to come. We'll do momentum again. You'll come through momentum yeah, again. Yeah. So, that's the, so that's something I decided early on. I'm like, I'm going to do these courses. Um, and I really want to make sure that the people who go through a course will have access to future courses because we're always mm-hmm. going to be changing and improving. And I've done courses in the past, online courses that that was offered. And I didn't always join in for the next time, but it was reassuring to be able to check back in and say, oh, they've added a new bonus. I can have that. And so I'm right. hoping that, you know, the the, the ladies, because it was all ladies, who did Momentum last summer, if, you know, you want to brush up on the marketing and mm-hmm. like, you know, because we're always having marketing is like changing. So we're updating and talking about different platforms and things Oh my like gosh. That. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's the one thing I wanted to say in terms of Momentum. So, you know, obviously the focus of that course was, you know, really around marketing. The great thing that I that I love, I actually because it was so structured and it was like week to week, and I really stuck with it. I have all the information. Like I did all the work. It's here. I'm looking at it right now. It's in front of me. Right? <laughs> did you put it so in a binder? Did you print it out and put it in a binder? Well, no, I have. Well, right now I have it. In the, it's all printed out because I did print out the things. I have it in a folder right now. My binder is my in the binder right now is the uh, power process stuff. Right. But anyway, I have it in the folder. Love it. And like I said, I don't. I didn't get to every single thing that we discussed. I just didn't, I just didn't have the time, but I have it all here so that I can always go back to it. um, And, you know, revisit like literally the, the, all my plans are here to do it. So um, that's the great thing about it too, aside from, you know, us having access to the pro the program. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And also the videos So everything's on video. Yeah. Yeah. You can rewatch really great too. Yeah. Yeah. And see your face actually again. very good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> that was more because that one was live. Um, yeah. But but just so you know, just to reassure you, anybody who signs up for Momentum this year, they don't get access to it last year. So they're not going to be watching the Zooms with that. Group. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not how it works. You don't get no. like retro. retro no, no. Whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's so great that you have all the notes. And you did all the work. You're such a star student. Love well, it. I mean, I mean, like, I, try, I mean, I try as much to keep up. It's like it sticks in your brain, right? It's like it's like yeah. going to university and you take a copious notes, right? And you're yeah, handwriting. Yeah. Maybe not anymore. People don't do that, but I would yeah. handwrite in a notebook. Yeah. And you actually absorb information without even really realizing it. Right. Right. And also, I mean, some of the work I had done before. You know, I I I'd approached it before. I had done different things. This was an opportunity to kind of uh, elaborate on it, or you know, expand it a little bit, or just look at it in a bit of a different way. Um, 
Like, I think the one thing that was really interesting with this course was doing the personality test. What is that called again? The EG. Um, I, don't, I don't know. The, oh, the, the, you know, I'm a ESFJ. <laughs> oh, the, isn't that the Myers-Briggs? We did the Myers-Briggs. Is this Myers-Briggs? Yeah. It, it must be. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not Myers. Anyway. Anyways, I can't remember. Yeah, we're looking at that with momentum because there's yeah, so many yeah. that you – Yeah, your personality type is so important when you have your Oh, my gosh. Business. I'd never done that before. Like, and, and so I didn't get, like, huge surprises from it. Like, yes, most of it um, – like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I kind well, of recognize that. It was the strengths finder. Yeah. That's what it was. Yes, yeah, yes, that's yes, the yes, one. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And also just how, how much your personality impacts, you know, who you are as a business person, you know, where your strengths lie, right? Like for me, I'm like the teaching, caring, you know, that kind of like, you know, social person. I feel like that's my strength when I, in my business, working with clients in that regard. I feel like that's, you know, been a good thing. Um, so it reflected that, but then just even the areas that I, that were maybe weaknesses or needs, you know, um, that was an issue. Like it just, I don't know. It just, sometimes it helps to just bring everything together. Cause I, mm-hmm. I, I believe that over, you know, all of the years I've been focusing on this, I've learned, oh my gosh, I've been exposed to so many things. I've been in so many Facebook groups. I've done, you know, all the things there's a ton of information, but I think you need to hear repeatedly. And sometimes yeah. it just kind of comes and people, you know, you, you get to get it given to you in a different way. Totally. It's like the ideal client exercise, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I've done that many times and I will still continue to do that many more times in my mm-hmm. future as my business grows. And so you're right. There's sometimes you see something you're like, oh, I've done this before. But when you do it again, from you're doing it from a different perspective, you're doing it mm-hmm. with different guidelines in a different environment, and there's always something to learn. But back to mm-hmm. what you said about the personality test, I think mm-hmm. it's so, and, I, and we talk about this in a moment, we go into detail about why the test, what you need, to, what, what is there is to look from that and what stands out at you is not just about doing a test. People can go online, go, yeah. oh, I'm going to do this personality test. Oh, cool. I'm a, I'm a star, whatever. I'm an outgoing person or I'm a Enneagram or whatever it might be. But if mm-hmm. you don't take the time to reflect on what that means and how that shows up in your business, yeah. then it's almost, what's the point of doing it? Right? Exactly. So and that's, yeah. And that was the cool thing about um, what we did was that we did reflect on how that showing up in our business and how, you know what I mean? Or how we could use those things in our business. So, um, yeah. Use them to I your mean, advantage, right? Like, right, yeah. Your, your teacher, I mean, I feel like you could be doing a lot more educational content for your future potential clients if the teacher mm-hmm. in you is strong, right? It doesn't have to be you in your face, mm-hmm. um, right? Using reels, perhaps. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I have to learn how to do I know. I've just been teaching myself. I'm I'm getting there. Yeah, it feels like a steep learning curve, but then once you get in it, it goes really quick. No, I, I I'll I'll figure it. I always figure those things out. But it's just like, oh my goodness, because yeah, I mean, side note, basically Instagram, the algorithm doesn't recognize any I get nothing other than yeah. people who follow me because I don't do reels. So anyway, that's a whole other thing. I know. They're it's and the thing is, the reality is this is our new this is the new world. Yes. Is that, that the technology we're using to promote our business, because it's become so democratic in a way, mm-hmm. it's constantly evolving and changing. Sure. And so it's that's, all about our adaptability. Yeah, yeah um, that's why, and you talked about this in the um, in your in the course. Um, you know your your clients, sort of your email list, and also your website and all that sort of thing is so critically important because. We don't have control over, and I've heard this many times, but we don't have control over those social media platforms. They're not ours, Mm -hmm. right? So, and like, just even in terms of where I get my business, my leads, I should say, I don't want to say business, but my leads, honestly, most of my leads come from Google. Interesting. Yeah. I've had like a few people reach out on Instagram. Uh, I've had a couple people see me on Facebook, but the but most of my leads come from Google. And I think it's because I have Google reviews. I made an effort on my um, SEO on my website, right? So that, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't 
fully appreciate the whole thing, but I, I did, you know, I have a square space. And so, you know, that's pretty straightforward. So I, I did the words or whatever. I'm assuming it's that, um, but that is honestly where I get most of my leads. And so for me, social media, I guess my approach to social media is like, it's where it gives me some credibility. Um, it's where people can kind of go if I'm better at showing up there, <laughs> getting, get to know me more, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, I think that that, for me personally, that's sort of been the place. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that you know mm-hmm. that, first of all. So it means mm-hmm. you're tracking your leads, which is one of the things mm-hmm. we talk about in mm-hmm. Momentum. You you need to know. I never, for years, I didn't do this. I never asked people where they found me. I was too nervous to ask them. Like I was yeah. too <laughs> insecure to ask how they found me. Like, why, why? Even now when I yeah. say it, I like get a little nervous. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm just curious. Like, how did you find us? And I'm like, <gasps> Holding my breath. I don't know why. I have no idea. I can't decide why we feel the things yeah. we feel. But you're right. And we talk about that. And in momentum, you know, it's really, for me, I hope this comes across, but in the courses that I create and will continue to create, I really am intentional to make it about you and your business. And yes, sure. I show this is how I do things, mm-hmm. but I'm not trying to push my way onto anyone if anything, I hope I'm able to inspire by here's how I've been doing this thing. These are the platforms I use, but you need to look at you, your brand, your client and come up with your own game plan. Mm-hmm. And that right. to me is like, it's step by step, but it's not do this thing, post this many times, also post here, also post there, because it, it really is dependent on you, your brand and your client. Right. Absolutely. Right. And I would say now the last couple of clients actually are like, they are on Instagram. So that's unusual because a lot of people that I've worked with, they're not really on social media that much either. So, you know, I mean, I guess it's the age bracket that it, people are hiring me at and things like that. That probably is part of it. Um, but yeah. And just in terms of my website, like I made the effort to have it redone and I actually work with a story brand coach and I tried to do you know I really focused on what you know that whole what I was offering like very similar to some of the things that we talk about in this course I probably could go back and redo that a little bit but the copy I think more than anything Mm. um but yeah I didn't make an effort there too to be honest with you I haven't one or two clients have mentioned my website in terms of something I said on it um but I don't really know I guess I could I don't know to, to, to I should probably survey people maybe a little bit more to see if that's actually impacting them. Like if they're totally. reading through it, you know what I mean? Cause it's a lot, there's quite a bit on there actually. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> first tracking those leads, right. And understanding where mm-hmm. they come from asking that question and it, whether it's in an intake form, in a discovery call, whatever your process might be, and then mm-hmm. making a note of it. So that, you know, at the end of the year, you can go back and look at the volume of leads and say, okay, well, five people came through Google searches, you know, three came through Instagram, two were referrals and one was a repeat client, whatever it might be. So you can start to understand and it helps you to focus your marketing efforts, right? Mm -hmm. You might be spinning your wheels, posting on Instagram all day long, three posts a day, but really all your leads are coming from LinkedIn, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't ask those questions and you don't know. Um, Yeah. I think that that's really awesome that you're trapped at all, like and paying attention to that. Cause I know a lot of people are not, we're just like, great, got a job, do the job, keep going. It's on my, um, my intake uh, contact form on my website. Awesome. So if there's a question, I asked them in there. So then I don't even have to ask them in person. <laughs> Amazing. And then we talk about like in momentum, we go through, through kind of like, and I'm going to talk a bit more this year mm-hmm. about the sales funnel and understanding like the top mm-hmm. of the funnel and bringing everyone down. I know we, in the designer's room, Chris joined us for a week and we talked about that and it really got me thinking too, just as, as a great way, because like you say, I, when you're a teacher, so you appreciate this, but when you're creating sort of a curriculum, it, it really makes, I really want it to be something where you're going from start to finish and it's building blocks as opposed mm-hmm. to today, I'm going to talk about this. Today, I'm going to talk about this. And then there's that sense of overwhelm of, oh my God, there's mm-hmm. so many things. But, you know, we, in momentum, we walk you through, like, let's start here. Let's start with who you are first. Now let's look at who your client is. Okay, now let's assess all the things and, and the message you're sending out there. And now mm-hmm. let's look at putting together a marketing map to put together a strategy, right? Yeah. 
It's not just yeah. do this on Instagram, do this on Pinterest. No, no, because, and you know, cause we, we get a lot of that information free, frankly, <laughs> like all totally. different places. Right. But yeah, I mean, just really focusing. And you know what? Like, I, I feel like even if you don't do all the things, this is sort of, you got a little starting point there. Right. So that it's, it's just a little less overwhelming. Cause I know that a lot, a lot of people are very afraid of social media and, and that whole thing. Like a lot of people that have come into this field later in life and that sort of thing. Um, and that maybe are of a certain age, they're just not super familiar with it. Um, so it, it can be very overwhelming and like easily overwhelming. So this is what, that's the one thing about this course is it just gives you a minute to think, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like, it's like, it's like going to a yoga class. Versus doing mm-hmm. yoga at home on your own if you're new at it and you don't have experience, right? Mm-hmm. right? Like for me, I'd rather go to a class where I have a guided, I will actually do the yoga for longer because I'm yes. in a room of other people who are also yes. doing it. I'll actually show up versus, oh, well, you know what? I'm not going to do that today because I said, you know, I would take Joseph for ice cream, so I won't go to yoga, right? Or yeah. do yoga, yeah. sorry. It's kind yeah. of having that structure. And I think for me, I, I love, and that's why I like to do it relatively in real time in the sense of like, we all go through the course together and the modules are dripped like once a week because mm-hmm. I'm the type of person who finds it overwhelming when I sign up for a course and I get access to everything. Yeah. I don't usually do it. No, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing. The other thing about this, about doing this course with the structure, with the group, you know, sort of structure that there is there's a level of accountability as well like just um related to what you said about the yoga you know versus going to class versus saying you're going to do it on your own right it's i just again you know what it's the structure of it we meet every week and we're doing da 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 you know like you're just doing it i think that helps well for me for me personally yeah yeah i mean you're not going to get an f if you don't do the work it's not no you you didn't you didn't yell but at it. <laughs> if you show up and you and you you're there and you've done the exercise, then you feel accountable to yourself, right? It's just right, having yeah. the parameter and the guideline to do it. Yeah, because yeah. we're always the first to not be accountable to ourselves, right? Mm, very <laughs> okay, easy not so to be accountable to ourselves. What, what are some of the changes that you would say that <clears throat> sorry that you've implemented? Anything specifically that you've implemented in your business that have paid off in this last year since you started this sort of journey? Um, yeah, definitely. Well, I've got better clients, more full service projects and better budgets. <laughs> Woo-hoo! That's yeah. a huge win. Huge win. If I was yeah. in my office, I'd ring the bell. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I think it's probably a combination of COVID and timing like with this as well, but I was ready for it. See what I'm saying? Because I had done the work with you yeah. when, because I've, I'll be honest with you. I've had more people reach out to me this year than ever before. Amazing. And, um, and so I think that the, uh, like I said, uh, really, truly, I was ready for the the people to come at me, <laughs> you know, mm. so that's been great. And of course, because of that, oh, and, and because I've uh, really looked at the pro- my process and clearly delineated phase one, phase two, phase three, with an extra focus on like, and doing a lot of work in the phase three part, which is the implementation installation portion of it. Um, I'm actually getting, making like money, like the best money I've ever made for my work. Amazing. Right. And the clients, like, you know, you always have this fear that you're going to put, send out a proposal. (laughs) They're going to be like, what? (laughs) And how much for what? (laughs) Right. And they don't, they go, oh yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll just, uh, here's a check. (laughs) What? (laughs) Or whatever, you know, the case may be. So it's a little shocking. That. So what changed? Like, so what gave you the confidence to charge more money for your services? Well, I, you know what? I didn't change my fee, to be honest with you. I just am getting paid for everything I'm doing. So what gave me the confidence was to actually have a full, as much as possible, client-centered process. So I'm worth what I'm offering them. I'm not scared to, to ask them for all this money because I'm no because I'm gonna give them. They're getting value for it. I'm doing all the things and I'm hoping, you know, obviously I, they get information from me um, about how, what, how my process works ahead of time. And we talk about it all along the way. It's in the contract. I really actually elaborated and expanded my contract or my letter of agreement based on the information that you gave, had given us and we had all talked about. Um, So um, 
all along the way, you know, I think they can see the value. And then hopefully in the execution of everything, they see the value. Now, you know, COVID has been a bit of a thing. It hasn't exactly gone as we all wanted and things have taken longer and all that sort of thing. But, you know, I mean, I never did use the receiver before. I was terrified. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if you remember, but I was like, well, how much are they going to charge? How do you know how much they're going to charge? Ah!" You know, and no, and getting feedback from all you and the other people who were using them, well, you know, charge this percentage. I'm like, okay, well, I just better just jump in and take the leap. If it doesn't work exactly the way I wanted it to, well, I'll learn from that and I'll know for next time. I don't even know if that's not even me, but I'm like, anyway, Amazing. I did it. Yeah. So just things like that, like, um, uh, you know, and just, just like I said, I really feel like it's, it's the process that's really helped me. Oh, and I feel like um, I personally have more confidence in design, taking design risks too, a little bit, because there's a better budget. Like I didn't do a ton of like cosmetic stuff before. It was really, truly just like decorating in the sense that it was like furniture, accessories, you know, that sort of thing. But God, I don't know what happened to me. I started like designing volumes and stuff. Like, Amazing. That's, that's like a whole scary thing. I, Cause yeah, again, my brain doesn't really, I'm not good with like, you know, that kind of thing, but I, but I, I got somebody to help me with it. Like I didn't do it all awesome. myself. So just like sort of, feeling the fear and doing it anyway, a little bit, mm. which, um, you know, I think that's true for a lot of things. So, um, and, and now because I've had the experience, although it's a lot of work, a lot of work going back to those smaller projects where you're kind of doing a little bit of here. Oh, I just want to help God. If I honestly, that used to be my thing. Oh, I want everybody to have design, uh, have access to design. I mean, I still feel that way, but it doesn't excite me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, it's it's also exciting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, it truly, truly is that I've set up my, I'm setting up my business in a way that sort of supports the things that I can do now more, like more easily. Listen, there's still room for improvement. Listen, there's lots of like little, there's tons of areas I'm realizing, even just going through the process. Um, after I, I did this, um, I, I changed it. Like I, I revamped it. You know, I can say, oh, uh, next time I got to do this differently. I mean, I think we all, that's normal. That's like always going to be like. <laughs> I'm still doing that. Literally yeah. yesterday I was with my team. I'm like, this, I'm like, I feel like this needs to be improved. Like how we collect, get our like quote requests and who's in charge of what. I'm like, we need to oh, tweak yeah. this and we need to get this written down and like documented differently. And, and I mean, I teach about process. I teach people like, here's the things that I do, but I'm continually changing and improving. Mm-hmm. Like there's not one set way to do it and it never changes. That's just not the reality right. of the world. Right. No, for sure. And, um, you know, and that's, that's, I mean, obviously that's, really important and it's just like it's a move it's a growing living thing our you know our business and each experience is going to highlight something different for us too right like oh this I screwed this thing up this time oh I'm never going to do that again I need to put this into place so that doesn't happen whatever yeah. you know whatever the case may be so so totally. honestly those are I feel like the biggest things that have changed for me and I do I feel like it's a you know a combination of COVID and timing and just me being ready to receive that's amazing. It's the confidence. Mm-hmm. It's what you said at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. It's having, mm-hmm. <clears throat> it sounds like getting your business set up and having the community and having um, the gumption in a way to sort of stand up for what your fee is and to charge it. But it also sounds to me like you've done a really good job educating your potential clients on your value. Well, I'm trying to do that. And that was directly from the, the programs that you've taught, like 100% how yeah. important that is. It, it, so. it, it, what I think is amazing about that, and it's it's about educating your potential clients on how you work, mm-hmm. how you charge for your services, the value you add so that they don't have any pushback because they're right. now very aware. They're on mm-hmm. the same page so that you're not then sending an invoice thinking, oh, I don't know, are they going to say something? Because you've mm-hmm. set it up for success from the very beginning. Right. And there's always going to be like glitches along the way. Like, listen, it's not a perfect thing. And, you know, for example, with this, because I'm working more and more with contractors now, sort of my whole process for working with contractors, I kind of had to figure that out because I hadn't done a ton of that. And that's like crucial to 
this <laughs> the thing running smoothly, the, you know? So just even things like that, like that, that's a learning curve. And I'm now I'm learning there's ways that I'll do things differently to make it smoother and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's amazing. I love watching your, your journey. And I love when you send messages to our group, you're like, ah, I just like, I just charged the most I've ever charged for a project. And I never thought I could charge that. And it's just so exciting to watch and see. Yeah. Um, I think you do great work. Before we sign off, I would love mm-hmm. it if you could share um, any last nuggets of wisdom with our audience. Um, well, I kind of alluded to it before, but I, what I would say just in my own experience, I think we can be really like um, hard on ourselves. Why aren't we doing more? Why, uh, why are, you know, I wish I was better at this, but I think we have to be a little bit gentle and patient with ourselves. Like I know in my own journey experience in the last couple of years, like I've said before, I've heard and listened to and read and so many of the concepts that we're talking about that are important. They're, they're all, they're never going to change. They're, they're, the basic concepts are, are going to remain the same, but For me, I know that hearing it at different times in my life, depending on what my mindset is, has made a big difference. Who is giving me the information, like the messenger, is also really important. So I think that, you know, you can't do everything at once and it's not even realistic. Um, So just like, just do what you can at the time that you're ready to do it as much as possible. Like, just just know that you're not going to, you're just not going to be able to do everything at once. Yeah, because um, it's huge. You're saying this is huge. Yeah, running especially if you've never done business before, a yeah. business, your own business. Yeah, yeah, it's running a business is so multifaceted. It's so, it's so much, and literally every day I say to my husband, I'm like, oh well, just learn something new, you know, like oh, there's another hurdle, there's another um, curveball. Okay, now I need to like react and. And like you say, mm-hmm. it feels sometimes like, oh, I wish I'd gone to business school. But I don't even know if I had gone to business school, if you had gone to business school, if designers go to business school, if it really changes much. You're learning theory, you're learning stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe you get a little bit of practice, but every day there are curveballs that are going to come your way and you just yeah. have to tackle them. And I love that you say that, you know, just because you've established your processes and you, you know, you know where your leads are coming from and you've got this great way of educating uh, your value in marketing, your message, there's still glitches. There's still things that come out. It's not perfect. And and I think it's so important that we remind ourselves that. And I think especially as women, I know mm-hmm. I've had one guy go through, we had Steve who did Steve, a yeah. podcast interview. I don't remember which one it was. Actually, I'm going to have him back on sidebar to talk about the difference between men and women in business. Oh, I think good. it'll be really interesting because he sees mm-hmm. it from a very perspective. But I do think that, back to what I was saying, <clears throat> as women, and I'm generalizing, I know, but there's a reason I'm generalizing. I, I mm-hmm. see a lot of women in my life, in our community, that, and myself included, we are mm-hmm. so hard on ourselves. We don't ever cut ourselves slack. We look at someone's highlight reel. We know it's a highlight reel. And yet at the mm-hmm. same time, we allow it to make us feel shitty. Mm-hmm. We, you know, a client says something that maybe hurts our feeling or we, or, or we think, oh, shoot, I messed up. I should have told them and I didn't tell them yep. the thing. Or how come I didn't know? I should know better. Yep. And, <laughs> you know, frick, and I just did it this morning. And I'm like being so hard on myself on something to do with like, not client related, but like business related with our team. And I'm just like, what, what is like, what, what have I done wrong? What is, why is it about me? And, and it's so interesting having a husband who also runs a business. He's like, Rebecca has absolutely nothing to do with it. it is that person, or this is just par for the course, or that's mm-hmm. going to happen. Don't let that client get under your skin and he can just brush it off. And I think that a lot of the times, not all women, but a lot of us are such people pleasers. We want to get everything right. We want to get it perfect. We want Mm -hmm. our marketing to be aces. We want to make sure we're showing up on all the social platforms. We want to make sure our work is beautiful. We want to make sure we get it photographed. We want to make sure everyone else in our industry knows how good we are. We want to make sure we have friends in the industry who we can lean on. It's like, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. But what I will say, and honestly, I'm not just saying this, but it is true. Meeting some of the people in this group and having the regular, you know, I mean, I, 
I felt like I'm speaking to these people all the time, but hearing from other people and knowing why they're there, their own reasons for being there and the things that they're struggling with, that really does help. Like it does help a little bit to put things in perspective. It doesn't mean like you say, you know, that I'm, I'm still a huge people pleaser. Oh my God. Like I take everything personally. Oh my Lord. It's just ridiculous. Like, and yeah, my husband's like, he's like looking at me like, what? Totally. Why are you so upset about this? <laughs> Right. It's just who I am. You know, I mean, that's part of who I am and I'll never be able to change that entirely. But yeah, I mean, um, but, you know, just having this camaraderie and this, you know, like people kind of getting it because they've been there and just saying, oh, yeah, I, uh, God, yeah, I did that or whatever. You know, it, it's helpful. Yeah. And even having a Zoom where somebody like you might not feel like you're fine. You raise your hand. Obviously, we already talked about that. But there yeah. might be somebody who doesn't feel that like, I don't want to share my problems. I don't want to ask questions. I want to show up. There's still so much that you can learn from the other people, the people, the Robins of the group who raise their yeah. hand and say, here's what's going on with me. I can't figure out the situation. The other person who's sitting there is probably thinking, oh, my God, that's exactly what happened to me last month. Or, oh, yes, that's how I'm feeling. I want to mm-hmm. see how others respond. Right. There's so much. Yeah to be said for showing up um, and being a part of a community where Mm -hmm. you can lean on each other and you can learn from each other and you're not going to have all the answers, but at least you feel not alone. Right. Right. And not being, and you're not as afraid to admit that you don't know what you're doing. Right. Cause that's huge. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's a really good, a really big piece, I think. Yeah. And I think the designer's room has been great for that too, because it's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, we're not, we're not here to talk about that, but that is, um, mm-hmm. it's like a monthly membership thing where it's like two calls a month. And one of those calls is a hot seat Q and a, and that's an opportunity for one person or multiple people in the group to like really ask a question about an issue that's going on in their life. And what I love about it is, yes, I can give my two cents and I, I can help, but everyone in the group pitches in. Everyone yeah. in the group is like, oh, that similar thing happened to me. And this is what I did. And someone else might say, yeah, but I don't know if that's going to work for you, Sarah. What about this? You mentioned this last week, right? It's so wonderful to see. Um, and having that structure, because I have friends, I've designed friends in the industry, which mm-hmm. is amazing. And I can call them up, but we're all busy doing our thing. And in our lives, there's something nice about having this sort of <clears throat> sacred time, if you will, yeah. where you know, you yeah. can go and you can anticipate and ask the questions and so I just, I, I love hearing that that's been yeah. as enjoyable for you as it has been for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you're all there for the same reason, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Totally. So totally. Okay. Yeah. We're going over time. We're just chit chatting away. It's okay. amazing. I'm so appreciative of you, Robin, for showing up today and uh, sharing your experience with the audience, especially as it pertains to momentum. Cause er- this episode will air right. I think in the launch period when we're opening the cart for mm-hmm. momentum, um, so I'm sure people will want to follow your journey. Do you want to let everybody know where they can find you? I'm on Instagram as Robin Cascanet Interiors. Please don't judge my lack of posting lately. <laughs> 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 and uh, my uh, my website is Robin Cascanet Interiors. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, I'm on Facebook too, same Robin Cascanet Interiors. So just put that in and you'll find me. You're very consistent. But That's really good. I'm very consistent. Yes, I am. But uh, yeah, no, honestly, I'm so happy. Well, I was a little nervous when I heard you wanted me to do this, but I'm glad I had an opportunity to do it. And um, honestly, I just want to say that this, uh, the, the courses I've taken with you have absolutely been worth the money. Not that they're crazy expensive, but you know, it's been worth, the investment has absolutely been worth it for me personally. Like truly, truly, truly. And you're very, you're an excellent teacher. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so lovely. Well, you're an excellent yeah. student. Like well, thank you. Time. You know, I am a keener. <laughs> <laughs> As she raises her hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Robin. Okay. You're so welcome, Rebecca. Enjoy the rest of your day. Well, isn't Robin just lovely? Oh my gosh. Robin, if you're listening to this, which I hope you do, uh, thank you so, so much for joining me on the podcast. I know it can be nerve wracking to, to share, um, but it's really helpful, I think, for other designers. I hope if you're listening, you were inspired by Robin's story and where she's taking her business. Momentum, as, well, after we stopped recording, actually, Robin and I kept talking about momentum, about the curriculum, because I'm really trying to make sure that this time around, it's super specific, it's tailored, um, and it's about you, who you are, your brand, recognizing that, 
who you're targeting, like who is that client? Let's get down to the bottom of like the real core of who you want to work with. And then how do you find them and how do you get your message out? That essentially is momentum at its core. You guys can find out more. Go to Rebecca Hay forward slash momentum. Uh, really excited to welcome you guys all into the course and any MOGs. That's what I call my momentum originals. Um, who did the course the first time, you guys will have access to it this time around as well. That's the one thing about my courses. Once you take it once, you have a lifetime access to all future updates and upgrades. Um, so there's that. Anyhow, I look forward to seeing everybody inside Momentum, and I'll see you soon.